Hi, hi everyone. I'm Sanya Kulu, and today I kind of want to talk about um, the meme algorithm, you know, that, that uses um, expectation maximization in order to find these motifs in these DNA sequences. Um, so a key idea is that in um, a DNA sequence, you have these transcription factors, um, which are these proteins, and they bind to these regulatory elements along the genome, like enhancers and promoters. Um, and then they help recruit RNA polymerase there. So these are non-coding regions of the genome. And when they bind there, then they recruit RNA to polymerase, and that helps lead to the transcription of a gene. So that helps with gene expression. So again, these are transcription factors, and they have these sequence-specific motifs, um, like, you know, that, that bind to the transcription factor binding site, like puzzle pieces. And when they bind, then, you know, all these factors get, you know, are recruited and it helps lead to the regulation of a gene, either the activation of a gene or the repression of a gene. So there are many different ways that we can figure out, well, how does this happen? And one of the algorithms here is, um, is expectation maximization to learn um, sequence um, motif models um, from the bioinformatics class. And we talk again about how um, we have like the genetic code here, um, you know, genes um, and how, and we're trying to basically find out with these transcription factors, like what are the motifs, you know, where do they bind? And that is super important for many different re um, reasons as well. So I'll be kind of walking through this task of us trying to find these motifs. Um, and yes, this is really, really cool and really important, especially because in a lot of different um, diseases, what we often observe is that, um, you know, like the SNPs can disrupt TF binding sites is something that we're finding. But in general, um, we are trying to look here at these motifs and, um, what we're finding is that certain transcription factors like REST bind to them and we want to predict along the genome, like what do these motifs look like? That's still an ongoing um, area in research. So we're going to talk about expectation maximization to figure this out. Um, and what um, expectation maximization is, is it's an iterative method to find maximum likelihood values. So we're going to try to maximize the likelihood um, of our probability weighted matrix and our position um, start as well. So we want to optimize and find, find the best set of sequence motifs. So let us say that we're given a set of these uh, DNA sequences, um, these four DNA sequences, and we know that the motif width would be three bases. What would be the optimal motif in that situation? That's what we're trying to find. So here I've prepared a walkthrough of this algorithm. And some of the assumptions that we're making are that the background probability is 25% for each of these four bases, A, G, T, and C. So here we have this set of four DNA um, bases, base sequences. And um, so these are this, you know, G, T, C, A, G, 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 A, G, A, G, T, A, C, G, G, A, G, and C, C, A, G, T, C. So these are the four sequences that we have. We know that the length L is six because um, there's six bases um, in each sequence and it's important that they have the, the same length. The width is three because here we're trying to find motifs of length three bases. So when we have this, then the possible starting positions are given by M equals L minus W plus one, which will be equal to four. So there are four possible starting positions for our motif. And our motif will be found um, by any of these sequences along here because we can start here and um, we can have like, if we start at position one, our motif will be GTC for sequence one. If we start at position two, then for sequence one, our motif will be TCA. If we start at position three for sequence one, our motif is CAG. And if we start at position four for sequence one, it is AGG. And we can do this for all of these four sequences here. So it's a small toy example. So again, like if we look at the sequence here, if we start at a given position, what we will see is um,
that um, if we start at position one, we have motif GTC, as I mentioned again. Uh, starting at position two here is TCA, uh, position three is CAG, and position four is AGG. That's why there are four total positions because our motif is of length three bases. That's why there are four possible put positions and M equals four. So these are the unique motifs for sequence one. And we do the same thing for sequence two, um, three, and four. So we look at sequence two, which is GAG, AGT, and then we see if we start at each of these positions along, what are the motifs that we get? You know, GAG, AGA, GAG is, you know, so these are duplicates, and then AGT. So you somehow feel that the, the, this motif is pretty um, often found in, in this um, sequence, because it happens twice. And we also look at sequence three, which is ACG, GAG, and we'll find all the motifs here. And uh, we found these four unique motifs for this sequence three, and these are what they are based on the possible starting positions. And for sequence four, again, we see if we start at position one, we get CCA. Position two, we get CAG. Uh, position three, we get AGT. And position four, we get GTC. So these are all the starts. So we have four again here. And then I basically I went through and I found like all of these motifs here from here, from sequence two, sequence three, and sequence four. And then I combined them all together and I have nine unique motifs that I that I have across all nine um, motifs. You know they're found in at least one of these four sequences. So these are the nine unique unique motifs: GTC, CA, um, GAG. AGA, AGP, ACG, CGG, GGA, CCA, and CAG. So in the sequence here, you have XI, which is the ith sequence, and uh, ZIJ um, is one of the motifs starts at position J in sequence I, and CK is the character at position um, K in sequence I. So sort of we talked again about um, these are the sequences here that we have. So just another way again, um, like let me just probably add this here. So this is sequence one, two, three, four. So this would be what we would call our um, X1. This is sequence one. This would be our X2. This is our sequence two. Um, this is our X3 here. And this is our X4. So um, that's sort of, again, like we have these nine motifs and these are the sequences and uh, we have this um, matrix Z that is focused on if the motif is starting at a particular position in sequence um, I or not. Um, and these positions again go from one all the way up to M where M is the number of possible starts, which should be four here. So in the end, the Z matrix tells us the probability that our motif starts at a given position in each sequence. So for example, for these motifs below, what, what do we see? So we see that um, if we started in, in this sequence with CAG as being our motif, then that means that we would start here at position three. So um, this is positions one, two, three, four, five, six. So in sequence one, we're starting at CAG. So we would expect for this to be one and everything else to be zero. So here in sequence two, we, if we start with GAG, this should be a one and everything else should be a zero. In sequence three, if we're starting with um, at position one, two, three, and four, then we would expect sequence the, um, for the, the starting point at four in sequence three to be a one and everything else zeros. And here we would expect um, in CAG here, it's starting at position two, we would expect a one here and all other zeros. So this is one because we're starting at position um, two in sequence four. So that's how we interpret this Z. It's, so it's saying, uh, so at the end when we identify these motif positions, these are the, um, this, we want to find the starting points in each of these four sequences. So if this is indeed the answer, then this is what we want to find. We want to be able to find um, that it definitely starts here, it starts here, it starts here and here, and, and that's what we would assign and everything else is zero. That's what we want to find, like where does this motif start? But to begin with, and again, um, we don't have, know this answer yet. So to begin with, we start off with this initial Z matrix and our goal is to find these motifs um, in these sequences. 
Um, so what this is seeing is the probability, for instance, that um, motif sequence one starts at position one, which here is zero. This is the probability motif sequence one starts at position two, again, zero. And this is the probability that the motif um, sequence one starts at position three, which is one here. Um, and this is the probability that it starts at position four. So basically the way that you interpret this is that these are the sequences um, each row is a sequence, and these probabilities in each row have to sum to one. So um, these have to sum to one. Um, and, um, you know, we have these probabilities and we have these ones where they start out with, and each row has to add up to one. So what I mean is that um, this should be equal to one. Oh, here it is. This should be equal, um, each row should add up to one. So this should equal one, this should equal one, uh, this should also equal to one. And this should also equal to one because these are probabilities. So that's what those should equal. Um, okay, so then what we see is that our initial Z matrix um, is again, it's focused on like, you know, like out of all the possibilities for each sequence, it can either start in positions one, two, three, or four. What's the probability that it starts in a given um, location? Um, out of all these four possibilities. And again, like there are only four here when you have um, six bases and the motif is three long. There are only these four possibilities that are possible. You know, if you, you scan along, that these are the only four possibilities. So out of these four possibilities for a given sequence, what is the probability that it's one of these four? So that's what our Z matrix is trying to find. So that's why it's one over M, there are four possible starting positions. And what is the probability um, that it is one of them. So to start out with, we really don't know. It's equally likely right now that it could be any of these. You know, it could be GTC for this first one, or it could be TCA, CAG, or AGG. We don't really know. So what we do is we set it equally likely for now, and our goal is to have this ones and zeros in the end. So we set it to 0.25 for all of these here. And again, it really depends on M, which is a number of starting positions. Like if M is five, then each of these would be 0.2 for instance. So it really depends. So what we do is we initialize it and we set this to be 0.25. So again, each row adds to one. So it's important to know that it's the rows that add to one here. So for each sequence, the sum of these probabilities needs to add to one. So these add to one, these add to one, and these add to one. So that's how we initialize it because we really don't know to begin with. Then we set values matching letters in the subsequence to some value pi and the other values to one minus pi divided by m minus one, where m is the length of the alphabet. So here in DNA, our alphabet has four bases, which is A, C, G, and P. So one minus pi is going to be 0.3 and m is four because we have four bases. So 0.3 divided by three is 0.1. So other values are 0.1. So for instance, with TAT, what you do is you look, okay, T is the subsequence or motif. So a mute motif is also a subsequence. So for TAT, if we see a T here, we give it 0.7 because that's for the T. And then everything else is 0.1. Then the second spot of this motif is an A. So we give this 0.7 and everything else 0.1. And then the third base in, um, this motif TAT is a T, so this is 0.7 and everything else is a 0.1. So again, like since our motif has a width W equals three, we need an initial probability weighted matrix that has four columns, one for the background and three for the motif positions. Um, so again, um, pi is 0.7 for the DNA base and um, is 0.1 for non-DNA bases for each motif. So since we have um, three um, elements in our motif, um, in our motif width is three. So we need K equals one, K equals two, and K equals three. So we need like three positions in this motif. So um, that's what these are, you know, it's P A comma one is the probability that we have an A in the first position of our um, motif. And um, like this, for instance, P C two is a probability we have a C in the second position and our motif. And like a PG3, it's a probability that we have a base G in the third and last position of our motif. And then we also have the background, which are non-motif positions. 
So in, in this position, uh, example, for instance, like, so if these are the motifs in these blue boxes, then the backgrounds would be like this GT and this G, and like this AGT in the second sequence, this ACG in this third sequence, and this C and this TC in this um, fourth and last sequence here. So, um, so pretty much like we also believe for now that the background, everything is equally likely all four bases are going to be found in the um, non-motif positions. That's what we initialize it to 25, 25, 25%. So basically like for instance, in our probability weighted matrix, based on our um, initialization of pi being 0.7. And again, it really depends on uh, what you select for pi as well. So it's up to you. But based on that, um, so again, we keep these at 25%, but we're using this as pi if the motif starts, um, which is 0.7, with a 0, 0.1 otherwise, um, and, and so on, you know, 0.7 if it starts with a C, uh, 0.7 if it starts with a G here, and 0.7 if it starts with a T and 0.1 otherwise. That's why this is 0.7 in this um, example here, this is 0.7. And the same things apply to these other two. So this would be like 0.7 if motif has an A in the second spot, 0.1 otherwise. 